Good morning, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Come on, why don't you stand with us? We're going to begin with a word of prayer this morning. How many of you came in ready to worship the Lord this morning? Come on. Come on. If you're not, get there in a hurry. All right. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity to come together and to join together and to worship your holy name. Father, we lift you up. Father, we just want to glorify you today. Father, I pray that we would let loose and let go of everything that's been going on or what we may have on our minds or be thinking about. Father, we would let all that go and lay it down at your feet and just uh, focus on you. Father, for you deserve it all. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Let's worship.
God, we thank you that we can trust you. God, we thank you that we can take you at your word and you are good on your promise. Come on, let's take a moment and just worship him in our own way this morning. Lift your hands if you feel comfortable. God, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, that you loved every single part of us forever and ever and ever, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you also don't let us stay how we were. We thank you, God, that you are transforming us to look more like you, Jesus. That, Lord, just like this next song says, once I was broken, but you loved my whole heart through. We thank you, Jesus, that you never forget us. You never forsake us. We love you, Lord. Have your way in this place, Jesus.
were singing the part, Death Has No Hold On Me. And I was thinking about Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 2 says, we do this. I'm sorry, let's start with one. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. And I want, I just felt led to encourage someone today. What do you need to disregard? What do you need to tell yourself? It has no hold on me now. It has no hold on me now that I'm going to run my race because Jesus fixed his eyes on the joy set before him, not the pain he was enduring. You know, this last week we got the pathology back on my dad. Um, I don't even know if he's in the room. We got the pathology back on on my dad, and I'm not going to lie, I was a little disappointed. I said, hey, it's cancer. But then he went in to the specialist and she said it's gone so we don't need to be concerned we're going to come back three months from now and we're going to do another test to make sure but when i heard the words ringing cancer i'm not going to lie i cried a lot and fear tried to overtake me but then monday came and the doctor confirmed that hey the cancer's not there anymore so what do you need to tell today you've got no hold on me because you know what we got confirmed on Monday cancer has no hold on him now so maybe it's the sickness it's the pain it's the falling apart marriage it's the addiction whatever it is that you can tell yourself it has no hold on me now there is a joy that I can fix my eyes on that no weapon formed against me will prosper. So we're gonna sing this again. And maybe you sing it in weariness today, but let me tell you, God will take your weariness and give you his strength. So let him pour it out, cause death has no hold on him and whatever it is has no hold on you. Give it to him today. Those things have no more hold on us in Jesus' name. Lord, fear has no hold. Sickness has no hold on me, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you took the stripes on your back so that we could be healed. We could be healed physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You do the healing, Lord. Come and do that today as we worship you, Jesus. We know that every single beating that you took was for a reason and lord today we thank you for that come on can you just thank him for the, for the blood that he shed for us that he didn't have to but he chose to lord thank you for choosing the hard 
Thank you for choosing the heart so that we could be free, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, today we don't take your sacrifice for granted. We don't take your sacrifice for granted. And today, Lord, we sing healed and forgiven that those chains no longer have any hold on us because of the blood, the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for all that you're doing. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hear our love expressed to you today, Father. Suffer for nothing when you shed your blood. Every drop was on purpose. What amazing love! I will make my boast in your cross.
lift it up to him today. Yes, you are Jesus. with every hand lifted. Today, Lord, we pray that these hands would let go of everything that doesn't need to hold us down, everything that has held us down in the past. Today, Lord, with our hands lifted high, with our hands open, with our arms open, Lord, we say you can have it. And I thank you that we can trust you with it all. And Lord, we know that you fill everything that is empty. So Lord, as we empty our hands and give them to you, give all of these things to you, Lord, we know that you would come and fill us. That's our prayer today, Lord. Come and fill these arms with you. Lord, come fill this heart with your presence. Lord, speak to me today. Come on, why don't you just tell him that? Lord, I need you to speak to me today. And I trust that you can. I trust that I can hear from you because you created me to be able to hear from you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and move in this place. Come and move in our hearts. Lord, above all else, we want to hear from you. And we thank you for the word that is powerful, that is going to come and is going to change us to look more like you. Lord, that's our desire. Change us to look more like you, Jesus. God, help us to fall more in love with you, deeper in love with you. As we give you this time, Lord, we give you our focus today. Lord, no matter what's going to happen later on today or later on this week, Lord, we give you this time. Have your way. Do what you want to do. As we worship you with all that we are, God, we give you praise. We thank you for who you are. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love you, we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everyone said, amen and amen. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise today? Man, we love worshiping with you. Why don't you say hello to someone this morning? We're so glad that you're here. Why don't you meet someone new and we'll be right back. Good morning, Impact Church, and welcome. We have just a few announcements for you this morning. If this is your first time here, we would love to connect with you. You can scan the QR code on the screen, or you can fill out a connect card in the seat back in front of you and drop it in a black offering box on your way out today. Here at Impact Church, we don't give to the church, but through the church, and we have a few ways you can do that. You can go online at yourimpactchurch.com slash give. You can give through the Church Center app, or you can drop your offering in a black offering box by the back doors on your way out today. 
As a church, we know just how important prayer is. So make sure you are here tonight from six to seven for first Sunday prayer. You don't wanna miss this hour of intentional prayer and worship together. So be here tonight, right here at Impact Church from six to seven. Child dedications are coming up May 21st during the 1045 AM service. If you would like to have your child dedicated, you can go online today at yourimpactchurch.com or through the Church Center app and sign your child up to be dedicated May 21st during the 1045 a.m. service. Men, don't miss out on the next men's breakfast coming up Saturday, May 20th, right here at the church at 8 a.m. They have a great time of food and fellowship and fun, so you want to be there. Saturday, May 20th, 8 a.m., right here at Impact Church. Hey, dear family, great news. Summer Grow Groups are kicking off the week of June 4th through July 9th. It's a short semester, only six weeks, but you need to get in one. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. We can't wait to be in groups with you. Just a six week semester. It's gonna end with our citywide serve day where we're gonna all be able to join together on July the 15th and serve our city together. We look forward to that every single year. But with groups, here are a couple of ways that you can get involved. We have some forms on the Church Center app so the Grow Group Leader Forum is the first forum we want to tell you about. If you are interested in leading a group, maybe you've led a group in the past and you're ready to lead again, or you've never led a group and you feel like the Lord's calling you to do that and step out in that way, you can click on the Church, uh, on the church Center app, the Grow Group Leader Forum, fill out that information. That'll get submitted for your group. And also, maybe you're not interested in leading, but you love to have people in your home and you're willing to be a host home. We have a host home form as well. And this could be for groups, this could be for youth events or men's events, women's events, anything like that in the church. So if that's you, we would, we would love for you to click on that form and fill that out. Let us know what events you would be willing to host in your home and that'll greatly help us out. But we cannot wait to, to be in groups this summer. It's gonna be an awesome time as we gather together. Yeah. And we know the summer, it's crazy. We're on vacations and we're in and out of town, but here's what we do know. We need to grow and so, whether growing in relationship with the Lord or with each other, we wanna be intentional about that. So don't miss out on the opportunity to be connected still this summer, even if it's in and out through the times that you're in town, be connected while you're here. Yeah, we know you're gonna be in and out, but we just can't wait together with you in Grow Groups. We believe it's vitally important and uh, it's gonna be an exciting summer. We're ready to kick it off with you. So God bless you guys and we'll see you this summer in groups. Students, if you're going into the seventh grade or graduating this year, this is for you. We have the opportunity this year to go to the Gateway Student Conference in Southlake, June 21st through the 23rd. The cost is $200 per student. That does not include the meal for Wednesday night, though. You can sign up on the Church Center app, and we can't wait to see you there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's get ready for a great word. Well, what's up, church family? Am I on? Am I on? I'm not on. Hello, hello, hello. You meant to give me that one. Am I on now? Hey, all right, let's try that again. Come on, who's excited to be at church today? Yeah. Well, you heard a lot of announcements. Uh, as you know, summer is upon us, and so a lot of things going on, a lot of opportunities to be involved and stay connected through the summer. Uh, we want you to do that. A couple of things I want to make mention of uh, as we get into things today. You heard about the student conference uh, leading a summer group. If you're interested in leading a group, fill that form out on the Church Center app. Let us know what uh, you would want that group to be about. And uh, just some information there that will get submitted and we can get that plugged in for you. 
Uh, we are in the month of May, and last year we began a thing that we were calling May We Pray, and so we're going to put uh, some emphasis on prayer this month as well. And so every day, I want to ask you to do a couple of things. We'll be sending out a message uh, that's going to have a devotional. And so if you'd like to be a part of that devotional that we do these periodically throughout the year where we join together as a church and we do devotionals on the Bible app together, we're going to be doing one specifically on prayer. And so you'll be getting that message out with a link where you can click that and join uh, join and be a part of that devotional. But then also every single day from now until the end of the month, we're going to stop and pause. If you need to set a reminder, I know I did mine on my watch, and so my watch will start you know, going off. But at noon every day, uh, wherever you are, if you're at work, maybe you can take you know, 10 seconds or something, or you're on your lunch break, and, and you would take the time to just stop and pray. And corporately as a church, we're going to take a few moments every day at noon, and we're going to pray together. Praying for your family, praying for the church, praying for the lost in our community, praying for whatever it is that God's put on your heart. And so we want you to be a part of that and participate, and we'll remind you each Sunday as we're going through the month of May. Uh, but be looking for that text that's going to come to your phone that's going to have the link on it for the devotional. And uh, then the last thing I'll make mention of, or two things, Mother's Day. Come on, men, this is very important. All the men need to lean in. <laughs> Mother's Day is next Sunday. I'm trying to help you out right now. I know that all of you knew that. I know all of you knew that it was Mother's Day next Sunday. Mother's Day is next Sunday, and we are going to be celebrating here, and uh, we're going to have give, a gift for all the, the ladies that are here next Sunday and uh, just a specific word for you. So it's going to be a great Sunday, but keep that in mind. We can't wait to celebrate with you next Sunday. We'll have photo area, so come on, bring your mom, bring all your kids. Come on and, and take, a, take a photo, be in church together. We'd love to have you here. And then the last thing I'll make mention of is today during the 1045 service, we are honoring all of our graduates, those who are graduating this year. And uh, with that, we're giving them a gift and part of that gift, a few things in a gift, but part of that gift is out on the table when you came in. So in the lobby, you're going to see the names of, uh, of all the graduates, and then you're going to see these Bibles and highlighters. And what we want you to do is each person stop by there and highlight your favorite verse in each one of those Bibles. And we want to give these to our seniors so that maybe when they're in a time where they're, they're needing some encouragement or they want to go back and reflect on something, they can go back and look at these verses that their church family has highlighted in the Bible that they were presented. And uh, we think it's going to be a blessing to them. So we don't want you to forget about that. So on your way out today, you can stop by there and in each one of those Bibles, just find your favorite verse, highlight that in the Bible. If somebody's already taken your favorite verse, come on, pick pick number two what's your second favorite verse come on you turn you, you turn to Philippians 4 13 you're like oh that's my favorite verse and somebody's already highlighted it and you're like oh Lord Holy Spirit what is verse number two that I need to highlight in this Bible but we we want to give that to them and bless them with that and that'll be uh, we think a great tool where they can go back and hey here are all the verses that my church family highlighted in the Bible that I was presented so with all that being said, we want to take a moment and pray for another church, and then we're going to get into the Word today. Uh, we want to pray for First United Methodist Church. So will you bow your heads and let's pray. Let's say a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the opportunity, as we say every week, to gather here. Lord, help us to never take it for granted. Never take it for granted. And Lord, we thank you for so many amazing churches. We lift up First United Methodist Church to you today. God, we pray that, uh, God, that they would be in your will. Lord, we pray for their leadership. We pray for their staff. We pray for their congregation. We pray for everything that they do, Lord, that they would be in your will and they would reach people for the kingdom. And we give you all the honor and glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right. Well, I want to begin with a thought today. Um, this is going to be uh, a message that the Lord has been working on my heart for the last few months about. And uh, I'm the I'm the type of person, uh, when the Lord, I feel like the Lord's kind of downloading something or a scripture stands out to me or something like that, I have a note in my phone that I'll put all these things down, and when the Lord brings me back to it, uh, I'll know, okay, it's time to, to speak on that or preach on that, and this is one of those that the Lord for the last few months has really been, uh, really been putting on my heart, really been dealing with me about, um, and I want to just start with this thought today. Is when you, uh, we could put it this way, when you offer information about your faith in Jesus, so when you're talking to somebody about your faith in Jesus, or somebody asks you about your faith in Jesus, what is your response? What do you call yourself? And do your actions and your lifestyle actually line up with what you call yourself? So not just what do you call yourself, and we're going to get there today, but do the things that you do actually reinforce 
what you say you call yourself. And so I want to talk to you uh, for just a few minutes this morning on this idea and this thought. Do you refer to yourself as a Christian, a person of faith, a believer? Do you refer to yourself as a follower of Jesus? And here's the thing. There's not necessarily anything wrong with these titles. We all kind of have our different titles, and I'll even say up here from time to time, if you call yourself a believer, a follower of Jesus, a Christian, whatever you call yourself, you know, you, you fill in the blank with that. But hopefully we're all talking about the same thing. Um, I think that there is uh, sometimes these, these terms, these titles just become a thing that we call ourselves. They become something that we identify ourselves by religiously, but not actually a lifestyle that we live out. So we like to identify ourselves a certain way, but we struggle more in the area of actually living out what we say we are. Um, I want to present this thought to you. What if we have condensed our faith down to a term instead of a way of life? If you go back and, and you read through the Bible, uh, and you probably heard this before, you probably know this before, but uh, we like to refer to ourselves as Christians. Anybody ever called yourself a Christian? Somebody asked you, are you a Christian? Yes. And your, your first thought was, well, I'm not a non-Christian, so I must be a Christian, right? Like, I am a Christian. But in, in the Bible, the first church, if you go back, they referred to themselves and they were called followers of the way. Like it was a way of life. It was a new lifestyle. It was a new thing that God was doing in the earth that had never been done before. And I'm not saying that this next statement includes every person, but for the sake of the message today, I want to I present it in this way, uh, just in an attempt to get you to think. Could it be that there is a difference between what you call yourself, so maybe you call yourself a Christian, and actually being a follower of Jesus? Could it be that the terminology that you have used to define yourself and your religious standing is different than actually being a follower of Jesus? Sometimes I think that we refer to ourselves as a Christian, and there is nothing wrong with using the term Christian, okay? Use it all day long, just know what it means. It means Christ-like. <laughs> So when I walk out into the world and I'm like, yeah, I'm a Christian, and people look at my life, do I look like Jesus? Because that's what matters. So there's nothing wrong with the terminology of saying you're a Christian, but I think sometimes, sometimes in our culture, we have used and, and kind of used the term Christian to associate with Jesus. So when somebody asks you, are you, like, do you, are you a Christian? We'll say things like, well, yeah, I go to church. Or, like, what is your, what is your belief? Well, I'm a Christian. Like, and a lot of times in our culture, we'll use that in, as a way to associate. We associate with the church. We associate with Jesus. We associate with, I prayed a prayer one time, and so I must be a Christian. And it's never really become a way of life. People associate with Jesus a lot of times, but their lives don't reflect him. People associate with Jesus, but their words don't reflect him. <laughs> we could say this. People associate with Jesus, but their social media doesn't reflect him. Is that too real? <laughs> Some of y'all are like, well, I don't, I don't do anything really wrong. I don't, I don't say anything really hateful. But like, we like to associate with Jesus, but our social media a lot of times is like, You know, people be, you know when you apply for a job, people be checking out your social media. You know when you're like, um, I want to be a leader. People are checking out your social media. Like what, like who are you really? And we like to associate with Jesus, but I think we could, we could say it this way. We are often tempted to associate with Jesus, but not want to be changed. We want to associate with him, but not actually have our lives changed too often. But what if we took it a step further and we sought to become followers of Jesus or disciples of Jesus instead of just using a term that we associate with Jesus? I know that the term Christian is something that we have used to describe people who are saved. And 
this may not be the case for everyone, but here's what, um, here's what I have noticed in general, and then we're going to get into a few specific points today, is that someone who refers to themselves uh, in, in association with Jesus, a Christian or a believer or whatever, if they're just trying to associate with Jesus, it's different than someone who refers to themselves and lives out being a follower of Jesus. Because here's the thing, I, in our culture, okay, this is just culturally, I'm not saying this is like, don't, you know, this is not theology 101 right now, okay, but in our culture, we have used the term Christian to associate with Jesus, and our lives have not reflected that. To be a follower of Jesus means that, or to be a disciple, if you want to even get even more technical, to be a disciple means that I want to learn. I want to be taught. What, like, I'm a disciple, I'm a follower of Jesus, so I'm inviting the Lord, I'm inviting the Holy Spirit to teach me how to live differently. Teach me how to think differently. Teach me how to operate differently. Teach me how to treat people differently. Teach me how to view and have a perspective of my job that is different than what I had before. I want to be a learner. I want to be somebody who is like Jesus. And I think maybe we have a tendency to condense our faith down to simply believing in Jesus when Jesus' call was for us to follow him. Not just believe, but follow him. And so I want to preach on that subject today. I've titled this message, Answer the Call. Answer the Call. What is the call? And so with the remainder of the time, I want to just try to answer one question, and it's this question. What does it mean to follow Jesus? If Jesus' call is for us to follow him, then what does it look like for us to follow him? And this is not going to be an exhaustive list of points and details or anything like that, but there are a few things that uh, I felt like the Holy Spirit put on my heart that I want to share with you today as to what it looks like to follow Jesus instead of just associating with Jesus. So here's my first point. What does it look like to follow Jesus? I think it looks like we deny ourselves, deny yourself. Now, I won't spend a lot of time on this because you can go back in January and there was an entire message on how disciples deny themselves. This is what we are called to do. This is what we do. We were entering into a season of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And the call was, hey, you know what disciples do? Disciples deny themselves. Look at this, this scripture again, Matthew 16, 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Can I just tell you today that following Jesus isn't about looking out for your own interests. In a lot of ways, following Jesus is giving up your own interests. I am no longer living for me. I am living for him. Following Jesus is not about you doing your own thing and asking God to bless it. Following Jesus is about denying your flesh and being led by the Spirit. Anybody ever read that in the Bible? Deny, are you being led by your flesh? Or are you being led by the Holy Spirit? Following Jesus is about denying you. And all of the worldly, ungodly, fleshly things that try to rise up within you, denying you and following Jesus. Now, I'm going to get some help for this one. Uh, do you mind helping me real quick? You're used to being up here. I have to be careful with this because some of y'all are like, whoo, you know, like don't make eye contact with me right now. Uh, Cole, do you mind helping me? Are you good? Come on, let's give it up for them as they're coming up here. I need what, Derek, you'll help me. Come here. All right, I want to I want to illustrate I want to illustrate this point. Where did Dustin go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> he was sneaking off. All right, uh, Cole Cole, you're gonna be Jesus. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. All right, right here, right here, right here. All right, so turn and face this way, and you guys get behind him like you're gonna follow him. Okay. So Cole's leading the way. Cole's leading the way, and here's what we have a tendency to do. All right, Cole, you just lead us all over this stage. Just walk, just walk all over this stage, and we're just following you. This is what Jesus has called us to do, to deny all the things that we want to do, to deny all of our fleshly desires and not be led by ourselves, by our flesh, but be led by Jesus. But here's what we have a tendency to do. As Jesus is, is walking around and Jesus is doing what he's going to do on the earth, anybody ever gotten distracted? And we start to try to satisfy our own desire. And now I'm over here doing my thing, 
Keep on walking. You keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Come on. We're getting our steps in today. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. And I'm doing my own thing over here. And here's the reality. I'm doing my own thing. And I believe Jesus is still leading this line. But I'm sure not in it. I believe I can look over here and see. Yep, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. He's leading the way. Jesus is leading the way. Jesus is younger than everybody up here and taller than everybody up here. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Jesus is leading the way. And I'm over here doing my, I'm satisfying my own fleshly desires. And I still believe that Jesus. Is, is Jesus the way? I still believe. I believe. I can see him right there. But I'm no longer following him. And I have condensed and I have lowered my faith all the way down to, well, I still just believe. But nothing about my life. Nothing about my my words. Nothing about the way I act. Nothing about the things that I do. Nothing about my social media posts. None of it reflect because I'm living for me right now. And I still believe that Jesus is the way. I, I prayed a prayer one time. And so I know where I'm going when I die. I believe. But what I've got to do Are y'all tired yet? All right, y'all can sit down. (laughs) Come on, give him a hand again. See, here's, here's the thing. Most of us, if not all of us in this room, would say we believe. And the reality is, the scripture teaches us, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. But Jesus' call was for us to follow him. And many of us have settled for believing and we have never denied ourselves. And we have never taken up our cross and we have never begun to follow Jesus. Like, oh, this is what Jesus is about? Then that's what I need to be about, not my thing. Oh, this is how Jesus would post on social media if he had social media? Oh, then maybe, that, maybe I need to follow that pattern. Maybe I need to follow that life. Maybe I need to go through the Gospels again and look at what Jesus did. Like, we can, we can say we believe all day long, and that may be true, but are you following? Are you following him? Because I can be off doing my own thing and still believe. But we're called to follow. Here's the question that we have to ask ourselves on this point. Is if I'm living to satisfy my desires, am I really following? If I'm living to satisfy my desires, am I really following? Here's point number two. What does it look like to follow Jesus? I think it looks like this. Give up everything. Give up everything. Look at this, look at this in Luke 14. It says, large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said. If anyone, in other words, a lot of people interested in Jesus. You ever notice this? A lot of people were interested in Jesus. Large crowds are following Jesus. And Jesus turns around and says this statement. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life. Such a person cannot be my disciple. You know, what this, you know what this means to me? That when I come to Jesus, he has to be number one priority in my life. This does not literally mean that you go home today and you're like, you know what, kids? I hate you. <laughs> you know, like you lay down in bed tonight next to your spouse and you're like, you know what? I love Jesus and I hate you. Because that's what Jesus said. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. I don't know if she's telling me or telling (laughs) y'all. Jesus has got to be number one. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. 
Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't he first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one, the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Now, I can believe in Jesus and just add him to my life, which is the temptation, but it's not the call. I can believe in Jesus and just add him to my life. Like, now I've got, you know, I've got a little work and I've got a little, you know, marriage and I've got a little kids and family and I've got, you know, career and I've got all these things. I've got my vehicles, you know, I've got all these things going on. I've got my finances. I've got all of this and Jesus is just, and then i got Jesus too. And Jesus just comes along with all of these other things. I can either add Jesus to my life. I can do that if I want to, but that's not what he called us to do. That's not the call. It's the temptation But it's not the call. We're not called to associate with Jesus. We're called to lay everything down to follow him and follow his ways. Look at this this Old Testament story you might be familiar with. This is in Genesis 22. It says, sometime later God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. Anybody ever, anybody ever felt like the Lord was speaking something to you? You know, like to, to sell something, give something away, do something extravagant, you know, be generous, whatever the case might be. And you were like, Lord, is that you? And I love, I love this, this scripture um, to just take some liberty with it if I can. It says, then God said, take your son. And Abraham's like, okay, I've got a couple. Your only son, okay, whom you love. And if that's not enough, I will call him by name. Take Isaac. This is, and it's like, Abraham, there is no mistaking what God is wanting Abraham to do. And many of us, we're like, God calls us to do something, to step out in faith and be generous or do whatever. And we're like, God, is that you? And God's like, yeah, that's me. Well, God, just show me a sign that it's you. Show me a sign that it's you. Well, here's what I, okay, well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to give financially to this family that is in need right now, and you don't really know what their need is, but I want you to give something to them, and I'm going to tell you what to give. Okay, like, are you talking like give them, you know, like flowers? God's like, no, I'm not talking about flowers. I'm talking about money. And don't we do this a lot of times? And I love how specific God was. He's like, just in case, so you don't miss it. I'm talking about Isaac. Go get Isaac and take Isaac to this mountain, and I want you to sacrifice him there to me. And I can only imagine what was going through Abraham's mind as he's, you know, on this journey. And I think that God was finding out from Abraham, are you willing to give up what you care so much about to be obedient to me? Are you going to put him ahead of me? Are you going to put the promise that I gave you ahead of me? Are you going to put all the financial resources that I've blessed you with ahead of me? Are you going to put the cars that you have ahead of me? Are you going to put the bigger house that you have ahead of me? Are you going to put the people in your life that you're trying to please and trying to make them like you ahead of me? Are you going to put the promise ahead of me? Or are you going to be willing to lay that thing down to be obedient for me? And so Abraham's received this promise and God provides a promise. God wants to know if he is first priority in Abraham's life. And so Abraham is on this journey. And can you imagine the thoughts that Abraham is having? He's like, I've got to be obedient. I've got to be obedient. But I love him. But I've got to be obedient. Maybe God will do something. Maybe you, maybe something else will happen. Maybe there will be another way. But even if, oh, but I can't think that way. I've, got to, I've just got to be 
obedient because he's the one that I'm following and I can't put anything before him because he's the one who's provided and he's the one who's brought us here and he's the one who gave him to me anyway and he's the one who's got me to this place and he's the one that provided in this way and he's the one that has saw me through here and he's the one who's called me on this journey and he's the one that I'm following after and so I can't get distracted and I can't go over here and I can't I can't get in the flesh and I can't get distracted with this thing I've got to keep following what God has wanted me to do and what God has called me to do I've got to be obedient but I love him but I want him but I want that come on in this the way that we do in our lives there's so many things that we want and that we feel like we love and that we care so much about and sometimes God's like will you be willing to lay that thing down to continue to follow me because that thing is becoming a distraction in your life and Abraham is making this journey to go sacrifice Isaac and I love I love I love Abraham's response it's crazy to some of us in our culture that when God says to Abraham I want you to take your only son Isaac and I want you to go to this mountain and I want you to sacrifice him to there there to me I want you to be willing to lay him down. And Abraham, check this out. Abraham was willing. Abraham got up the next day and started packing a bag. Because if this is what God has called me to do, this is what I've got to do. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his own son to obey God the Lord would you be willing to give up everything to follow Jesus now I'm not saying that God's going to ask you to give up everything some of you are scared right now you're like oh my gosh if I even think yes right now like God's going to make me drain my savings account (laughs) I'm not saying that God's going to ask you to give up everything but I'm asking you would you be willing I mean is that stuff more important than your relationship with God Would you be willing to lay it down if God said, hey, you know that thing? Yeah, that thing. Will you get rid of it? Will you sell it? Because it's distracting you? Will you you give it away? Will you lay it aside for a season? Because you're, you're, your attention has wandered. And it's easy for us to do. But I think following Jesus looks like this willingness to give up everything and follow after him. If I got to take nothing with me, I'm following Jesus. It's a willingness to give up everything. There's a, there's a place in the New Testament where Paul, he describes all the reasons that he has to be confident in himself. Anybody ever thought up all the reasons that you have to be confident in yourself? Paul, he's, he's listing all of these things, and he's making a point at the end of it that we're going to see. But this is in Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 3. He says, For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his Spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Some of us have too much confidence in our flesh. Paul says, we put no confidence in the flesh. We boast in Jesus. Though I, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. In other words, he says, I got all the things. I've gotten all the degrees. I've accomplished everything that I've set my mind to. I've done everything by the book. If anybody has a reason to have confidence in what they can do, it's me. And look at what he says. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of of faith 
Paul says, I consider everything that I have accomplished and everything that I have gained and everything that I have done in my own strength and everything that I have in my life is garbage in comparison to knowing Jesus. When push comes to shove, if I have to make a decision, I'm choosing Jesus. And all of this is nothing. And I will choose Jesus every time. Can I ask you a question? Are you more in love with your lifestyle than you are Jesus? Are you more in love with the things that you have than you are Jesus? Are you more in love with what you have accomplished than you are Jesus? Paul says, everything I've accomplished and everything I've gained and everything that, that has come into my life, if I've got to make a decision, it's all garbage compared to following Jesus. And I'm willing to lose it all. Whoo, and Paul lost a lot. I love when Paul was called. Jesus speaks to Ananias and says, I need you to go tell Paul how much he must suffer for my sake. And Paul said, I've had an encounter with Jesus, and I don't care what he asks me to do. I'm in. I don't care what he tells me to do. I'm in. I had an experience with Jesus. I encountered him, and whoo, it doesn't matter. I don't care what I have to give up. I don't care what I have to lose. I don't care about anything else in my life. Whatever Jesus tells me to do, that's what I will do. What would the world look like if this was the attitude of the church? I don't care what Jesus asked me to do. I don't care what I've got to give up. I have counted the cost. I have made a decision. I have decided I'm following Jesus. And as the old song says, no turning back. No turning back. Come on, anybody know that song? I have decided to follow Jesus. Though none go, whoo, though none go with me. <laughs> if nobody else is going, I'm going. If everybody else walks away, I'm still following. Because I have made up my mind and I have made a decision that I will follow Jesus. Are you willing to lay down everything for the blessing of following Jesus? Is Jesus first in your life? Is Jesus first in your marriage? Is Jesus first in your business? Is Jesus first in your finances? And here's the question I think we need to ask ourselves on this point. If I'm holding on to my will, am I really following? If I'm holding on to what I want, if I'm holding on to my will, am I really following Jesus? Am I willing to lay everything down if he asked me to? To give it all up. Say, no, I've made a decision, and if I've got to choose, I'm choosing Jesus. Here's the last point today. What does it look like to follow Jesus? I simply titled this one, Go Fishing. Go fishing. Anybody like to fish? I don't mind. I don't mind fishing, but I'm not going to pick it. <laughs> you know, if somebody, if somebody says, hey, you want to go fishing? I'm like, you know, I'll, I, can, I can do some fishing, but I'm just not going to pick it. <laughs> I'm not going to be the one asking you to go fishing. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I like a lot of things. Um, I, I, I found this sign. Anybody ever seen one of these signs? Anybody ever lived in a town that was small enough that you walked up to a business one day and that was the sign that was on the door? And you were thinking, what? <laughs> Gone fishing. I think, I think that this should be the sign that hangs on the heart of every follower of Jesus. That when we walk around, we just have this sign all over. I'm just gone fishing. I'm gone fishing. Considering Jesus as our example, here's what he said about himself. This is Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. If you look at Matthew 28, we know this as the Great Commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And we're familiar with this term, Great Commission, but it's a call to go. It's a call to disciple. 
It's a call to teach. It's a call to baptize. It's a call to be doing something. And we love the Great Commission, but I love the account of the first time Jesus called two brothers to follow him. You ever read this before? Jesus is starting his ministry. He's walking by the sea. And he calls out, and this is what it says in Matthew 4. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. I'm going to bring the worship team back and come help me. Come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. Have you ever just imagined that you were Peter or Andrew in that moment? And this is how, if, if it was me, this is how the conversation would probably go. Jesus is on one side, and, and I'm on the other side, and Jesus says, Hey! Yes, sir, because our kid's in the room, right? So we're respectful. We're trying to teach our kids, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Hey, come follow me. What are we going to do? <laughs> you ever had Jesus? Hey, come follow me. We're like, hmm. Where are we going? You ever been... You ever been afraid to fully submit to Jesus because you're afraid he's going like, to call you to the mission field? Or, you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh my gosh, if I go all in, Jesus is going to call me to move. <laughs> I think in me and in you, that just shows how, how, uh, how much we don't trust him. So Jesus, <laughs> hey, come follow me. What are we going to do? I should just let you do this part since you're over here now. I'm going to show you how to fish and catch people. And the Bible says that immediately they left everything. They gave up everything. They left their way of life. And they started following Jesus. And Jesus' call was to follow him. And I'm going to send you out. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you how to fish for people. If the call that Jesus made is that we are to follow him and be fishers of men, can you actually follow Jesus and not fish for people? When was the last time that you were gone fishing? Not just came into a cozy air-conditioned room on a Sunday. Woo, I'm all in your business now. But when was the last time that you were gone fishing? If Jesus' call to the very first disciples was, come follow me and I'm going to show you how to catch some people. Because if you go back, they hadn't caught anything. Jesus says, throw your net on the other side and they catch all this fish. And, and, and the nets are about to break. And Jesus says, if you think that was something... Now that you know I know how to catch fish, come follow me and I'll make sure that you know how to catch people. And if the call is to follow him and be a fisher of men, can you follow him without fishing? When was the last time that you shared your testimony of God's goodness with someone else? When was the last time you extended an invitation to church? When was the last time that you were intentional to see the opportunities that God gives to reach someone in your circle of influence. I love this account where Jesus has just gone back to heaven and uh, Peter is, 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 they've just, you know, it's like, hey, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. And this man gets up and walks and they go into the temple because it's the time for prayer. And the Bible says that Peter saw his opportunity. And so he addressed the crowd. Peter saw the moment that everybody was paying attention, like, what? just happened and Peter said here's a moment this is a God moment this is a God moment 
and he saw his opportunity. When was the last time that you were intentional to see the opportunities that God gives you to reach someone in your circle or in your sphere of influence? And here's the question I believe we have to ask ourselves on this point. It's simply this. If I'm not fishing, am I really following? If I'm not fishing, am I really following? If I'm not fishing, am I really following? Will you stand to your feet today? As we end, I want to put these three questions up on the screen just to remind you and and just something that I know even in my notes. Do we have the slide that has all three of them on there? Do we have that? I may not have sent it. Okay. If I'm living to satisfy my desires, am I really following? If I'm holding on to my will, am I really following? If I'm not fishing, am I really following? So here's my question. And then I want to pray for you. And our prayer team can go ahead and come down and get ready. Do you associate with Jesus? Or are you following Jesus? Are you associating with Jesus? Or are you actually following with Jesus? We can say it this way. Have you answered the call? The call is to follow. What does it look like to follow? To deny yourself. To be willing to give up everything. And to be about the things that he's about. People. Those that are hurting. Those that need him. When was the last time that you went fishing? When was the last time that you had eyes to see an opportunity in a moment? And you thought to yourself, I know this right here. This, this moment. This is a God moment. And I see the opportunity. I want us to be a church of followers, not just believers. Believing is important. Believing Jesus is who he says he is and he did what he said he did. And believing that in your heart, confessing him as Lord and Savior of your life, that is important. But the call is to follow. Come follow me. Come and follow me. Come and follow me. Jesus is walking by Matthew in the tax collector's booth. And Matthew's been seeing some things that are going on. And Jesus says, hey, you, come follow me. Come follow me. Have you answered the call? Because the call is to follow Jesus. I was honestly talking with the Lord as we were down there. I said, I'm going to just tell him down, but I really felt like before we even took time to pray that I was to share this. There were two things. I felt like there's someone in the room and you feel like your your plans are changing. You thought you and the Lord had a plan and you feel a shift in your heart that you're just submit to the change of plans. It may not have gone the way we went. Oh, we were telling someone the other day, um, I went to school to be a teacher and my plan, I thought me and the Lord I was going to go and I was going to work in a school as soon as my kids got in school. And when our first daughter, when she went to start school, he came to me and said, I really feel like we need a homeschool. It was a change of plans. We had a change of plans when we thought, all right, Lord, we're going to step out and we're going to become associate pastor somewhere. And it was a nagging. We knew the Lord was saying, go, go. And on Friday evening, I got to love on babies. And I was telling someone, I said, I am so thankful for the people that God brought because of a change of plans. What God has done because of a change of plans. So that was one that there's someone in here and you feel like plans are changing. And it wasn't supposed to be part of the plans. And you keep trying to go to the original plan. I want to encourage you. Be willing to pivot and do what he's asking you to do. Because you don't know. Listen to me, you're on the other side of a change of plans for us. And I am so thankful. There's two, when he was up here walking and he had to had them following, I felt like there's someone, maybe multiple people in the room. I'm gonna use Maddie this time. There's multiple people that you're like, hey, I'm following. I'm not doing what he's saying. I'm not all the way over there. But you're like, my social media looks good. But my life at home, nobody knows about. I'm not really following at home. My 
kids get a completely different version of me than what I let everybody else see. It's a complete submission to follow. Are we going to get off sometimes? Absolutely. We will look at each other. We will have moments where we're like, I feel like I've kind of gotten out of alignment. Lord, realign me. But that we're fully submitted. It's not just my social media that's following. It's not just it's not just when I'm out and about with everybody. It's when I'm at a restaurant, that waitress, she knows I follow. It's when I'm at home and my babies know I follow. And sometimes don't get me wrong, my following, my following as a mom, it looks like, I'm so sorry, I messed up. I'm sorry I lost my temper. That's following. Because we're not perfect. You're gonna mess up. But we follow, fully follow. That's so good. So good. I want to I want to pray over you. And then we're gonna sing this last song. We're gonna worship together. And I just want to encourage you, if you're in the room and you need prayer for anything, when the worship team begins to sing, you can slip out of your seat, come down for prayer. Let us pray with you. We'd love to pray with you. But my prayer for you is that you walk out of here with a new perspective and maybe some things like Amanda was sharing, some things that need to change, some things that need to shift or something that you've been putting off for a long time and, and you know this is what God has for my life. So Lord, right now we thank you for your word. We thank you for the call to follow God because we can trust you. We can trust you. Your plans for us are good. Lord, you know far more than we will ever know God, you know the end from the beginning. You know what you have set before us. You know what our purpose is. You know what we are called to do. And so, Lord, as we follow you, you will help us to walk that out. Let us be people. Let us be a church of followers of you. That in everything that we do, we follow you. We follow you. If we have to make a decision, our decision is to follow you. Our decision is to follow you. And Holy Spirit, I pray as we sing this last song today, if there's anybody here who needs prayer for anything in their life, I pray that you would draw them for prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
two things really quickly. This is the message after the message. Jesus wants you to follow him because he loves you and he has a plan for your life and he wants you to be in it because that's where you'll be most fulfilled. That's where, that's where you'll be most uh, protected may not be the right word, but when you're in the plan of God, the will of God for your life, the purpose of God, he wants you to follow him because he knows what's best for your life. And the second thing is this, all of these things that we're talking about, just being a witness, denying ourselves, being willing to give up everything, those things come through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I just felt like there's some of you in here, maybe you were thinking, I have been trying, I've been trying. It doesn't come with you trying, it comes with you submitting to the Holy Spirit. When you submit to the Holy Spirit, He'll lead you to deny yourself and be led by Him. He'll lead you to, to be willing to give up everything and, hey, that's not good for you and, hey, you need to get back on the right path. He'll lead you in those ways and He'll lead you to the right people in the right circumstances and the right opportunities in the right moment. So let's submit to the Holy Spirit's work in our life. Let's submit to what He's doing and remember that the reason we're called to follow is because God has a great plan for your life. He has so much for you to accomplish, to build his kingdom, and we do that by following after him. So, Lord, today we thank you. Lord, we make the declaration today that we will be followers. We will follow you. We want to be in your will. We want to be in your purpose and your plan for our lives. Lord, we're willing to give up anything you ask us to give up. Lord, we're willing to lay it all down. And Lord, help us to see the people in our lives who are hurting and lost and to be a witness, to share our story, to be light in the darkness, to do whatever you've called us to do. Lord, we ask you to give us wisdom to know what to do with what we've heard and give us courage and boldness to do it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. We hope you have a great week. We'll see you back here next weekend.